Alan Chuck Dinkins will make introductions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have David Irwin with us from the firm of Baldwin and Jenkins here to present the 2021 audit for the city of Valdosta. David, welcome. Well, again, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you all are doing well. Again, my name is David Irwin, and I'm with Walden Jenkins. I was the partner who oversaw this year's audit of the city's financial statements, and uh, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to be here with you all this evening uh, to discuss the new results of this year's audit. The purpose of this evening's presentation is to uh, provide you all an overview of our, uh, our, our audit report, talk a little bit about the two compliance reports that we issued in conjunction with the audit, hit a few of the financial statement highlights, uh, talk about some required, uh, talk, about some, talk about some communications that the audit standards require as we uh, disclose to you all, and of course to answer any questions that you all may have. Now, the financial statements themselves, they are uh, the responsibility of uh, the city's management and the members of the city council. Uh, as your independent external auditors, our responsibility is to issue opinion on the city. Now, we conduct our audit in accordance with government audit standards and generally accepted audit standards. And I'm happy to say that we are issuing a clean or unmodified opinion this year's report. This is what you want. This is the highest level of assurance that we can go out and for all this. Uh, what this means is that, in our opinion, the financial statements are fairly stated uh, in material respects, in all material respects, in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, as part of the audit, there are two compliance reports that we also issue, uh, the first of which is the single audit. Now, again, uh, the single audit is a compliance audit that is required when an entity has over $750,000 of federal expenditures per year. Uh, the city of Valdosta has a little over $14 million in FY21. Uh, <clears throat> as was the case with the financial audit, we are issuing a clean or unmodified opinion on the single audit. Uh, the second uh, compliance report on the slide is something we call the Yellow Report. And uh, the Yellow Report uh, is a report on the city's internal controls and your compliance with various laws and regulations. And uh, I'm pleased to report to you all that we do not have any audit findings this year, meaning we noted uh, no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies um, in the city's internal control uh, during our audit. And uh, you, know, you, you can assume you look at your financial statements, and as you all well know, um, you know for a city your size, you all have um, significant financial activity for which you all have to do that, for which you all have to account for. Um, in addition, with all the new um, accounting standards, auditing standards are implemented each year, and really just how complex uh, the financial reporting process has become. Um, it makes it all the more impressive to be able uh, to report to the city council uh, an audit that is a clean opinion with no audit funds. So again, uh, congratulations to you all on that. Um, you know, I think this is very much of a reflection of hard work done by your staff, Chuck and his team. Uh, they did a really good job of giving us everything that we needed in order to get the audit finalized. And again, um, having no audit findings is really a flesh of that hard work. So again, just want to thank your team for their, for their hard work this year. Uh, now for a brief overview of your financial statements. <clears throat> the city prepares what is called an annual comprehensive financial report, uh, otherwise known as an ACFR. Um, an ACFR requires the inclusion of additional information that goes above and beyond the basic financial reporting process and the basic requirements um, of financial reporting. This document, which again, the city prepares, you know, a lot of clients that we have, uh, we prepare their financial statements, but you all uh, go above and beyond and prepare your own set of financial statements. But um, this document is submitted annually to the Government Finance Officer Association, otherwise known as the GFOA, where they put it through a pretty stringent review process. Um, they have not only their professional staff, but a special review committee uh, that looks at your document. And, when they look at the city's financial statements, their goal is not to assess the financial health of the city. Uh, their goal is to make sure that there's the necessary information is included in your financial statements so the readers of your financial statements can do so themselves. And through this report, through this review, the city has been awarded the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. 
and that certificate is included in this report. And uh, I believe this is the 33rd year in a row that you all have seen this certificate. So, um, we audit about 600 governments about the southeast, about 160 of them received this certificate, and, and I can count probably two hands how many that can say that they, they received this certificate for 30 years. So again, um, just another testament to you all in your finance department. Um, this is a very impressive document and one that you all should be proud of. All right, now for a brief overview of the financial statements. Uh, the city's basic financial statements are broken down into three sections. The first of which is the government-wide financial statements. Um, this section uh, provides a broad view of the city's operations in a manner similar to what you would see in a private sector business. Um, all the funds of the city are combined under either a government activities column or the business type activities column, uh, depending on the nature of that fund. And uh, the slide we have here just kind of summarizes the city's financial outlook from a, from a government wide perspective. And uh, as you can see here, city end of the year with assets and deferred outflows of resources of $415 million. Approximately 344 million of that are your capital assets, uh, net accumulated appreciation. The city also had around 22.6 million dollars in cash and cash equivalents, and a little over 11 million dollars in, in investments as of the year end. Um, total liabilities, deferred, outflow, deferred inflows of resources, were approximately 190 million. Um, of that amount, around 160 million are long-term in nature, meaning they're not due the next fiscal year. Uh, looking at your revenues, you have revenues of a little over $100 million, uh, which is an increase of approximately $15 million compared to FY20. Um, expenses were around $86 million, which is an increase of around $8 million compared to prior year. So uh, this resulted in an ending net position of approximately $224.5 million, uh, which represents an increase of approximately $14 million compared to $14 million for the year. So, uh, again, all in all, a uh, uh, really good year for the city from a, from a government perspective. The second point of your financial statements are the fund level statements. Uh, you know, this, is, this is what you all typically see throughout the year. Um, this component focuses on individual parts of the city's uh, uh, financial, uh, financial report, financial funds, and it reports these funds in more detail than that of the government wide statements. And uh, you know all the city's funds that you all have. You know, if I'm in your shoes, my primary concern would be the general fund. It's the uh, it's the main operating fund of the city, and it accounts for the majority of your revenues received and funds expended. And we have a chart on this page, a chart on this slide that shows the general fund's revenues for the year. Uh, total revenues were approximately 22.6 million dollars. Um, that's an increase of about seven million dollars compared to FY20. Um, Taxes, obviously, is the primary driver of the fund, um, which is just under $36 million for the year. Uh, this chart breaks down the general fund's expenditures, uh, which is a little over $41 million. That's an increase by $3.2 million uh, compared to FY20. Uh, you know, again, once again, no surprise, the majority of your expenditures um, are public safety, which was around $27.5 million. A um, couple of other uh, Functions worth noting to the city had general government expenditures around 9.7 and public works expenditures of $2 million for the year. Uh, so, in total, your revenues for your general fund exceeded expenditures by $1.6 million. So, uh, that's a pretty impressive turnaround from FY20 when your expenditures actually exceeded your revenues by about $2.6 million. So, we really kind of have a, a $3.6 million turnaround in your general fund. Uh, compared to FY20. So, again, you've all did a great job this year of increasing your revenues relative to your expenditures. Um, General Fund also had approximately $6.4 million of transfers in from other funds. Around $2.5 million um, was your, your transfer from the water sewer fund, which you all did on an annual basis. And uh, another $2.6 million was uh, from the new fund called the Federal COVID Relief Fund. Um, and again, that's a new fund this year. And that accounts for the funds that you all have received uh, from the American Rescue Plan. So, uh, in total, the general fund's fund balance increased approximately $6.2 million for an ending balance of $10.5 million a year. This next chart, uh, it shows the fund balance history of the general fund over the past five years. And, uh, you know, it, it's always interesting to kind of, kind of look back, reflect, and, and see where you were. Uh, 
compared to where things currently stand. And uh, you know, as you can see on this chart, um, there, there was a pretty significant jump this year compared to previous years. Uh, but again, as I mentioned earlier, this is really a combination of your increase in, in revenues relative to your expenditures this year, uh, as well as that $2.6 million transfer in uh, from, the, from the COVID relief fund. So, and, and when we talk about fund balance, one thing I always like to mention, you know, fund balance is not what you all have in the form of cash to spend as you see fit. Uh, fund balance is merely the difference between assets and liabilities, only a portion of which is cash. So, uh, you know, of that $10.5 million in fund balance, you have around $2.9 million that's classified as unsigned. <coughs> um, there's no restriction or limitation on how those funds can be spent. So, um, you know, when you compare the $2.9 million of unsigned fund balance to prior year, when you all actually had a deficit on the signed fund balance uh, of around $360,000, um, you all have done a good job of starting to build up those reserves in the unsigned fund balance. Um, you know, that being said, one thing to keep in mind, the general fund incurs expenditures of approximately $3.5 million per month. So, you know, if you all have a June 30 year in, you need that, that strong unassigned fund balance to kind of carry you through the month of July through November uh, when your revenues are, are typically down for your, for your property tax revenues. So, um, again, it, it's good to see that increase this year, but, uh, you know, I would encourage you all to, to continue working on that increase. Um, and, and building up those reserves in your own side of fund balance. Uh, a couple other funds I want to briefly mention are um, three of the, the, the city's significant enterprise funds, which are your, your water, sewer, um, your sanitation, and your stormwater funds. Um, now, again, enterprise funds, they are um, used to account for operations in a manner similar to that of a, of a private sector business, where the, where the goal of these funds um, are to be self sufficient and to generate sufficient operating revenues to cover their operating expenses. So uh, the chart on this slide, uh, it, it, does, uh, it does just that in comparison to the revenues for each of these funds to their expenses. Um, you know, as you can see, the water sewer fund continues to do quite well um, in the end of the year with operating revenue of about 3.7 million. And uh, you know, the other two funds, while, while they are smaller in comparison to the water sewer fund, um, both generated operating income of approximately $175,000 so um, all in all, your enterprise funds continue to do well. Um, as a whole, they are um, generating positive operating cash flows, which again um, is what you want to see out of your enterprise funds. Uh, one final item to discuss with you all is just certain information that the audit standard requires for we communicate. Again, with you all receiving a clean opinion with no audit findings, um, the information on this slide is, is, is kind of formality, but um, you know, we had no difficulties or disagreements in dealing with management. Uh, we had no uncorrected misstatements. And again, we are independent of the city as required by our law standards. And with that, um, unless anybody has any specific questions, uh, that concludes my presentation. Again, um, what I've tried to do is just hit the highlights of what I think is the most important to you all. But um, if there's anything here that I didn't touch on that uh, you all have questions about, um, please don't hesitate to ask. Again, just want to thank your staff for their hard work this year. Uh, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to be service to you all and, uh, and look forward to working with you. David, before I go to the council has any questions, uh, that was a glowing report. It reflects well on this council, it reflects well on the citizens of Alaska, but it especially uh, it reflects well on Chuck Nickens and his staff, Mark Barber, our city manager as well. Gentlemen, that was exceptional. And, and thank you. Very much, thank you as well, David. Thank you. Thank you very much.